is News Conference Extra with Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to News Conference X-ray special segment of Today in L.A. Weekend here at NBC4 in Los Angeles on a remarkable Sunday morning with Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Press out of Washington, D.C., which airs every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. So, Chuck, um, I, from where you sit right now, after seeing the extraordinary events of the past week, where do you see the, the, this, the standing of the federal government in its response to this remarkable crisis that the president finds himself in? I would say uh, the federal government's in a better position today than it was a week ago. Uh, I think uh, it did at times over the first couple of weeks of this, uh, as this was growing. You know, you, you, the federal government, I, f I think for a while, or at least via the president, felt like, oh, this is a West Coast problem. You know, this is a problem just in one part of the country. Uh, I think that now that has changed, and in that sense, I think you see particularly the, the task force as it's led by the vice president, uh, a little more in sync, a little more facts first. I do think the president's involvement at times causes confusion. I think it, he clearly creates his own personal um, vindictiveness, can sometimes come through in some of these things, and it probably does, it, it makes it a little bit harder, I think, for some of the other folks on that task force. But when you look at the functionality of the relationship between the federal, federal government and the state government, that had an uneven start, and I think you're hearing now that it's getting smoother and smoother all the time. I get the impression I can't speak for anyone else other than myself, but when it comes to a crisis like this, the public wants to hear information, they don't want to hear politics. Yeah. They don't want to hear the mayor of New York holding a news conference and then no. criticizing openly the president of the United States, nor do they want the Correct. president to lash out at the news media saying he's not getting enough credit. No, it, it's, a, it's, it's a, look, a crisis when life and death, life and death crises are, are the most amazing MRIs for politicians. We find out everything about who they are. You can't hide your character in a moment like this. Who you are gets revealed as a leader in moments like this. Um, it is the most revealing, it is the most revealing moment you will have on any elected official is when they're dealing with a life and death crisis, whether it's a natural disaster, a man-made one, or something that we're dealing with here. Uh, and so, yes, I think you're right. I think the tolerance for petty politics is very low with the American public. And I think there is a high price to pay by any politician that practices petty politics right now. Um, and that goes for whether it's the mayor of New York or the president of the United States. You could make the argument that the public, they want information and they want someone to navigate this crisis for them. But they have a memory and they're going to remember what they have heard throughout this process of members of the Senate who may have personally mm -hmm. benefited as a result of information yeah. they received from the Intelligence Committee, that they will remember. Uh, and they will also remember <laughs> things like uh, Senator Johnson out of Wisconsin, Ron Johnson suggesting, well, maybe we should let thousands upon thousands of Americans die and right. be because we want to hang on to the economy that we had. It is. There are going to be comments and decisions that won't age well. I think you just referenced some, some comments on, on Ron Johnson that won't age well. Uh, the stock sales that you're talking about with the Republican senator on North Carolina, Richard Burr, that may not age well. His explanation may not age well. And I think that is, these are the, look, we are, I have put a lot of politics in the back burner myself. But I'm not losing track of these stories. And, 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 you know, these are all things that are happening now that I won't be surprised if they show back up in paid television advertising in the fall, assuming we are having any form of a normalized campaign season. Um, but I have a feeling that whether voters forget it or not, they'll be reminded of it. Who's on the program? And more specifically, what are you going to be asking them? Well, look, I'm starting, uh, we're going to have uh, on the task force, we're going to uh, get the, the latest from the presidential task force. I'm also going to have Governor Hogan on the Republican side, and we'll have a, a Democratic governor as well. And everything is about, to me, is about three things that I'm focused on. Number one, 
where are we in the ability to handle on ventilators, on the, on the personal protective equipment, on the surge capacity of all these places. That's number one. Number two, are we learning more about how this virus spreads? It seems like, frankly, this week, I don't know about you, but I, I, it, it seems as if what we learned last week about this virus is different than what we learned this week about this virus, including how long does it live on surfaces, how, how asymptomatic are people if they do spread it around, things like that. Uh, I'd like to get the latest. And then, of course, where are we on the, on, on the economic uh, bailout of, of Americans? Uh, and I think that, that's sort of our focus this Sunday. And, and finally, 40 million Californians have been placed on this stay-at-home order. That's one out of every eight Americans. Just wondering, the president says that he doesn't see a national lockdown. It's not a lockdown, but a national stay-at-home order isn't in the cards. But we don't know. And I would say, I don't think it's ever going to come from the national level. I, the president is giving guidelines that essentially suggest governors to do this. He did support the decisions by both California and New York to do this. Illinois, by the way. Conan, take a step back. The cities of Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York City have been shut down. Disney World is closed. Our leagues are closed. It is a remarkable picture here in America in 2020. Um, we've been talking about all of the ways we have not gotten the job done. It is remarkable that as a country we're doing this and we're doing this fairly peacefully as we do this, as we try to fight this invisible enemy. I mean, it is a remarkable picture of where we are in America in 2020 right it now. It certainly is, and we hope it stays that way. Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Price, 8 o'clock Sunday morning, NBC4. Chuck, good luck and stay safe. You too, and stay healthy. NBC4's news conference at 9 o'clock is preempted by NBC Sports. We will see you next week. I'm Conan Nolan. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Sunday.